All right, Peter Van Dusen watching along with you our commemorative ceremony coverage here in Ottawa, a memorial and tribute to Queen Elizabeth II, uh, immediately following the end of the funeral service for her in London. Uh, as you see the military parade making its way uh, through the streets of downtown Ottawa, it will soon head up past the war memorial, past Parliament Hill, we'll pick up the 96-gun salute and tribute to the Queen. And while we do that, we'll continue to give you these images, but as promised, we'll show you what else has been happening, where this parade will end up, which is at Christ Church Cathedral, the arrivals of some of the special guests who will be there. That's Adrian Clarkson uh, and her husband arriving, uh, the former Governor General. She will be one of the speakers uh, eulogizing uh, the Queen today. That's just a few moments ago, arriving at Christ Church Cathedral. So think of two parallel events taking place the military marched to the church and uh, the church in a preparation mode, if I can put it that way, preparing for the, the service at about one o'clock Eastern time with the arrival of uh, these special guests. Uh, there are political leaders, uh, many uh, cultural leaders, uh, various dignitaries, um, members of uh, the federal cabinet, you can see arriving there, uh, a number of them. Elizabeth May from uh, the Green Party as well. So you'll see uh, as this unfolds a, a, a real cross-section of Canadians, former Conservative leader uh, Aaron O'Toole and Conservative MP Michelle Rempel, of uh, artists, uh, Indigenous uh, leaders, uh, a real cross-section of, of Canada. Um, many of them with personal uh, and all of them with some sort of connection uh, to Queen Elizabeth uh, II and uh, Ontario Premier Doug Ford. Signing the guest registry there, former uh, Conservative Prime Minister Joe Clark, one of two uh, former Conservative Prime Minister is in attendance. Uh, he is uh, one of the invited guests, along with Maureen McTeer and Catherine Clark. The other being uh, former Prime Minister Brian Mulroney. And there he is, arriving just a little while ago at Christ Church Cathedral. He will also deliver uh, a eulogy. And there he is uh, being greeted by the Ottawa Mayor, Jim Watson. So he too will deliver remarks about uh, the relationship with Queen Elizabeth II.
Peter Van Dusen continuing coverage here on CPAC of the Canadian commemorative ceremony to mark the passing of Queen Elizabeth II. And her funeral service taking place in London, England, concluding just in the last half hour or so, and now picking up our Canadian coverage, which you're seeing is the military parade um, weaving its way through the streets of the, of the capital, soon to pass the National War Memorial on Parliament Hill. We'll hear a 96-gun salute, each shovel marking uh, one year of the Queen's 96 years of life. And on the other side of your screen, you see shots from inside the church and outside. There's NDP leader Jagmeet Singh arriving for the service, which will take place inside Christ Church Cathedral, stopping uh, briefly, it would seem, there to talk with a reporter. And we'll continue to give you a sense of uh, what is happening as this march makes its way to Christ Church Cathedral for about, uh, and, and almost precisely one would think, one o'clock Eastern time. So a little less than 40 minutes from now, where we will pick up coverage of the service inside Christ Church Cathedral, and we'll continue to uh, show you the gathering inside as people arrive. There you can see some 600 invited guests, many members of the federal cabinet, uh, other uh, politicians from different parts of the country, um, diplomats, uh, well-known, um, prominent Canadians, musicians, artists, indigenous leaders, uh, all of them either assisting uh, at the ceremony today, in many cases playing a role in the official program, which will last about an hour, gets un underway at about one o'clock Eastern time. So we'll continue to provide you these, this uh, dual shots, if you will, that show you the, uh, the parade, of course, but also uh, the preparations at Christ Church Cathedral. Peter Van Dusen watching with you. Just a note here, you can see uh, the military uh, parade and eyes right that we just witnessed, as you'll see them make their way past. Off uh, on the left side of your screen uh, would be the National War Memorial. And I think earlier we saw um, in the parade, we saw uh, the Service Guard of Honor included uh, a flag bearer. You saw it, I think it was encased in, in, in plastic there because of the inclement conditions. You saw the, uh, the uh, Queen's flag being borne by Major Corporal Tom Lane of the Canadian Forces National Sentry Program. Uh, mentioning this now, as they also make their way past the British High Commission. Mentioning this now because uh, he is the, uh, as I said, the uh, Corporal Tom Lane, Major Corporal Tom Lane of the National Sentry Program. He was He's carrying the flag for this parade, and that sentry program, important to note, created to honor and remember uh, the Canadians who served in the World Wars and other major conflicts. Um, perhaps its most uh, visible presence is the constant sentry duty at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier at the National War Memorial, where the parade is just passing now. And there you see the, uh, just making his way into church, the new leader of the official opposition, uh, Pierre Polyev. And this is the arrival of uh, Richard Wagner, the Chief Justice of Canada, who uh, is, yes, Chief Justice, but uh, in his role today as the uh, 
um, you know, the uh, efficient in the absence of uh, the Governor General Mary Simon, who is taking part, was taking part as uh, assisting the funeral service for uh, the Queen, the late Queen today in London, England. Now, as the military parade makes the turn here, as you look at uh, Pierre Polyev arriving, signing the guest book, this is the scene as well. Just down from Christchurch Cathedral at the Canadian War Museum, the uh, 96-gun salute that will take roughly 16 minutes as the parade makes its way to Christchurch Cathedral. One salvo from these cannons to note each of the 96 years that Queen Elizabeth lived. And back at Christchurch Cathedral, the most members of the cabinet are in. Uh, Deputy Prime Minister Christian Freeland uh, making her way in. Of course, the Prime Minister um, was at the funeral service in London today for Queen Elizabeth II. Uh, Christian Freeland uh, arriving at the church, as we see many other members of cabinet. And uh, we have some shots, not a whole lot of them. You can see some of the uh, people, I'm assuming, uh, most in the city of Ottawa, but we know many people have come from outside the, the capital region as well to be part of the commemorative ceremony today in Ottawa. And it's, I can tell you, it poured rain all night. It was pouring rain this morning. Uh, conditions are not the greatest, but it looks as if there may be a bit of a, uh, a break in the heavy rains at least. Um, and. Uh, the bad weather hasn't uh, deterred everybody from coming out far from it. Uh, from what I can see, there seem to be a fair number of people lining the streets. That's a quick shot of Wellington Street in front of the Parliament buildings where the procession is now uh, starting to move through. And we, Peter Van Dusen watching along with you, note the significance of, of the military procession. We saw it uh, for the funeral service, uh, the, uh, the very important role, the central role of military and, and police services in the uh, funeral service for the Queen in England today, for the commemorative service here um, in Canada as well, the nation's capital. Uh, the Queen, of course, Commander-in-Chief of Canada's military and uh, as Captain General, Colonel-in-Chief and Air Commodore-in-Chief of the uh, number of units represented here today. And it's a, it's a long list. Uh, Royal Regiment of the Canadian Artillery, the Military Engineering Branch, the Governor General's Horse Guards, the King's Own Calgary Regiment, uh, the Royal 22nd Regiment, Les 22, Governor General's Foot Guards, the Canadian Grenadier Guards, the Stormont Dundas and Glengarry Hollanders. And there's a, a long list of the units and branches, regiments that uh, the Queen uh, held, held title for, and uh, many of them represented here today. And so the very clear significance of uh, this procession and those taking part of it and their connection to the late Queen.
Peter Van Dusen watching along with you as we continue to watch this military procession make its way to Christchurch Cathedral. Uh, and there uh, we see the shot of Her Majesty's flag being borne by uh, Major Corporal Tom Lane of the National Sentry Program. Seeing as well quite a number of female members of the Canadian Forces and that connection with Queen Elizabeth as well. As we know, in 1945, Princess Elizabeth uh, joined the Auxiliary Territorial Service, the woman's branch of the, of the British Army. She became the first female member of the royal family to actively serve in uh, the military. And her connection, so that deep connection to the, to the forces herself, having been a serving member, and knowing what we know about her commitment to the forces in this country, uh, many numbers of visits she made to Canada, more than 20, visiting many ships, military bases across the country, presiding over a number of different military ceremonies, troop inspections, presentations of colors, wreath layings at commemorative sites, of course, and uh, commemorative ceremonies, uh, and many, many, many meetings with Canadian veterans. So in the next 25 minutes or so, this military procession, as the gun salute continues as well, 96 salvos to mark each year of the Queen's life. Um, as the military procession makes its way past Parliament Hill and uh, the Houses of Parliament, the centre block of course, undergoing a, a massive and ongoing renovation project. 25 minutes or so from now it will arrive uh, at Christ Church Cathedral. where guests continue uh, to arrive there for a commemorative service that will start about one o'clock, pretty close to one o'clock Eastern time and will last for about one hour. All of it for you here on CPAC. Let's continue.
Well, again, I'm Peter Van Dusen, listening and watching along with you the commemorative ceremony in the nation's capital for Queen Elizabeth II. As on the left of your screen, preparations continue at Christ Church Cathedral. Most of the guests are inside, some 600 invited guests, politicians, diplomats, artists, indigenous leaders, and many others from a, a wide cross section of the Canadian community, as it were. And on the right of your screen, the military parade, making its way. Um, they've just gone past the Parliament building, so uh, roughly four blocks or so left uh, before they arrive, five blocks before they arrive at Christ Church Cathedral for uh, just around one o'clock Eastern time when the uh, ceremony inside the church. Uh, will begin. A ceremony that will uh, feature a, a, a real mix of, of tribute and acknowledgement and celebration of the Queen's, the late Queen's life, her connection, commitment to Canada. Um, it will feature uh, poems and prayers um, that are connected to the Queen music that uh, marks the life of the Queen. Uh, as many, um, hundreds at least from what I can see, it's it, it, thousands of course along the route in total, but a um, number of, uh, hard to tell exactly how many given the kind of bad weather we've seen, but many people have showed up to watch this military procession uh, to be able to pay their final uh, respects to the Queen Elizabeth II and her connections to Canada and to Canadians. You also hear the ongoing uh, 96 gun salute. to mark the 96 years of the Queen's life. On the left of your screen, live again inside Christchurch Cathedral, 
former Prime Minister Brian Mulroney and Mila Mulroney. They set to take uh, their place alongside other former Conservative Prime Minister Joe Clark. Brian Mulroney, along with uh, Adrian Clarkson, both will be delivering remarks about the Queen, eulogies to the Queen, and what we are told will be a, a ceremony, and you see Adrian Clarkson, a ceremony that will highlight key moments of the late Queen's life directly related to Canada and to Canadians, featuring a mix of religious and non-religious elements, prayers, uh, readings, tributes and addresses, musical interludes and a video montage. And um, with, a, with a special uh, keen sense of uh, an obligation and a, and, a, and a duty to reflect uh, the diversity of Canada, the works of many uh, Canadian artists represented, and, and along with Her Majesty's personal uh, preferences and uh, ties. And so we are told to expect a, a service that gets underway in the next 15 minutes or so that will really reflect that Canadians uh, will know, that will resonate with them uh, because we'll uh, hear a lot uh, that will remind us of Queen Elizabeth II and her close connections to this country.
Kwe, welcome. Bienvenue dans ce lieu de prière sur le territoire non cédé de la nation Anishinaabe Algonquin. As we gather to celebrate the life of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, may God hold us with grace and bless us with peace. From the deathbed, a young and vibrant queen rose to mount the magnificent Burmese, who carried her to the side of a horseman, waiting to go with her to the oaks of Loch Lamond to reflect upon her years of her reign. In the spiritual world, where the old are young again, the queen and duke rejoin to continue their unconditional love and support they nurtured for one another while bringing culture and identity to the British people. Physical death, the soul leaves it in the past, and the amazing heart of the spirit begins its eternal life. A new world begins where the fair-minded and good-hearted among us will hear an honour song being sung for them after the transformation from the physical life to the spiritual one comes to pass. The queen is dead. In the land of the red maple leaf, the sorrow of many citizens fills the skies. The tears, the prayers of her admirers take flight like the geese of spring and autumn, making their way to the queen mother who waits to hold her daughter close to her bosom once again. To the mourners, the queen was as the grandest tree in a boreal forest, a tree whose spirit and grace spread pride and comforting smiles to all around it. A tree, a mother to all, whose commitment to duty brought emotional wellness to those standing in its shadow. In this broken world, where the eagle records on behalf of Creator the wrongs of human beings commit in bringing suffering and debt to all our relations, we accept that all of us will someday account for the negative actions we are guilty of while living on this beautiful planet. The horrors committed against Indigenous peoples of British colonized lands by past monarchs will be spoken about around the council fire of the spirit land. The Queen will at that time renounce the brutality of the past. Her good heart, the teachings of the spawning moon into which she was born, the whitefish moon into which her last heartbeat was captured, will direct her to do so. The Queen, her gentleness, her ability to emotionally connect with the common people, her desire to make the world cleaner and safer are truths she carries with her now into the great land of souls. She was a light to the British subjects while she walked on this earth. She was to the people who love her, and she continues to be a fire, now offering in its circle a role model for the future generations of her bloodline to follow. May she rest in peace. Prions le Seigneur. God of all consolation, in your unending love and mercy, you turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life. 
Lift us from the darkness of grief to the light and peace of your presence. Grant us grace to entrust Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth II, to your never-failing love, which sustained her in this life. Receive her into the arms of your mercy and remember her according to the favor you bear for your people. For to you all honor and blessing are due, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Enfin, mes frères, tout ce qui est vrai et noble, tout ce qui est juste et pur, tout ce qui daigne d'être aimé et honoré, tout ce qui s'appelle vertu, et qui mérite des éloges, tout cela, prenez-le en compte. Ce que vous avez appris et reçu, ce que vous avez vu et entendu de moi, mettez-le en pratique, et le Dieu de la paix sera avec vous. Parole de Seigneur.
Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of Canada, always emphasizes religious diversity and interfaith harmony with her public messages to the Commonwealth. May we take this moment of reflections together. Dieu, nous te rendons grâce pour ta fidèle servante, Elisabeth II, qui a consacré sa vie au service et au bien-être de tous. Nous te confions, Sa Majesté le Roi, qui pleure la perte de sa mère et tous les membres de la famille royale endeuillée. Nous prions pour les dirigeants de ce monde, afin qu'ils poursuivent la vision d'Elisabeth II en consacrant leur vie au bien commun. Nous nous souvenons du service d'Elisabeth II et de son dévouement à la cause de la paix. Nous prions afin que règne un esprit de respect et de réconciliation entre les nations et les peuples. Nous prions également pour tous les membres en uniforme qui servent sous l'autorité du roi. Protège-la, protège-les afin qu'ils puissent accomplir leur devoir avec courage et persévérance dans le respect de la dignité de chaque être humain. Loving God, may your hindering commitment be echoed by our commitment to live in peace with one another. Amen.
years ago. One day in 1952, when I was in grade nine at Lisgar Collegiate here, Vincent Massey was going to address us. The Governor General came out on stage and told us in gentle but solemn tones that the King had died and that we now had a Queen. Shakily and for the first time, we sang God Save the Queen. He then explained that Canada acknowledged the Queen as sovereign and that the crown in Canada was the basis of our constitutional democracy. Je n'avais pas d'idée alors, comme je n'étais arrivé que neuf ans auparavant, quand j'avais trois ans, en tant que Chinoise réfugiée venue d'une région défaite de l'Empire britannique qui s'appelait Hong Kong, que 48 ans plus tard, j'occuperais la fonction qu'assumait M. Massey. Mais le Canada est un lieu remarquable, un lieu étonnant. Il se passe des choses ici, non seulement pour moi, mais pour des millions de réfugiés et d'immigrants qui viennent ici. Pendant 70 ans, la Reine, en tant qu'incarnation de la Couronne, a été le symbole de la légitimité démocratique. Ceux parmi nous qui respectons le modèle de démocratie parlementaire de Westminster savons à quel point l'évolution de notre démocratie a figuré au cœur de notre croissance en tant que peuple canadien. In the library of Windsor Castle, after a dinner with fellow governors general, celebrating her Golden Jubilee in 2002. The Queen joined me as I stood alone, looking down at an antique white linen shirt with brown stains in a glass case. The label read, shirt worn by Charles I at his beheading. In a neutral and level voice, the Queen said, he was my ancestor and then walked away to join the rest of the party. Several days ago, we saw the Queen's coffin taken to Westminster Hall, where Charles I was tried and sentenced to death, where Oliver Cromwell's disinterred head hung for 20 years. Il est mystérieux le cheminement de la démocratie, du consensus et de la justice. Et pendant toute l'histoire de notre pays, nous avons avancé en bondissant ou en chancelant, en courant ou en flânant, pour traverser une forêt d'ignorance, de haine ou d'intolérance. Et pourtant, nous avons réussi à tracer un chemin vers une clairière vers un lieu lumineux qui, il ne faut pas se faire d'illusions, ne peut rester lumineux que si nous l'entretenons, si nous convenons de l'agrandir, si nous nous engageons et nous promettons les uns aux autres que l'effort en vaut la peine. Si nous échouons là, cette forêt va nous étouffer et l'obscurité va tomber sur nous et nous envelopper. Pendant les 70 ans de cette ère élisabétaine, nous avons, en tant que Canadiennes et Canadiens, tissé un canevas nouveau grâce aux éléments hérités de la Magna Carta. La Magna Carta, c'est la grande charte des libertés de 1215, quand le peuple, les gens ordinaires comme vous et moi, ont reçu du roi John la promesse d'une véritable protection contre les injustices. In 1982, Queen Elizabeth II 
came and signed the patriation of our Constitution, for which Canadians had worked for decades. We gained our Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Canadians will always remember the Queen for coming to sign over to us what is rightfully ours, our human rights, our human freedom. It preserves that clearing in the encroaching forest. It provides the light that exposes ignorance and bigotry. On the occasion of her Golden Jubilee in 2002, the light shone when she came for several days to Rideau Hall, and we had a luncheon featuring 50 guests, each a Canadian, who had excelled in an endeavour during each year of her reign. John Polanyi, Nobel Prize winner, 1998. Norman Jewison, Oscar winner. Jean Beliveau, Paul Henderson, Stomp and Tom Connor, Douglas Cardinal, Zacharias Kunuk. We lit up the dining room at Rideau Hall for Queen Elizabeth with the luminaries that our century, that our country, Canada, had produced in her first 50 years as Queen. It was an exciting moment for us as Canadians to celebrate. In one of my last visits with her at Sandringham, beloved by her because she raised her horses there and Prince Philip enjoyed training for his carriage racing, we were speaking quietly after dinner. Suddenly, focusing very directly on me with her sharp blue eyes, she said, I shall never abdicate. I was rather taken aback and replied, I wouldn't have expected that you would. And she said, it is not in our tradition. Although I suppose if I became completely gaga, one would have to do something. <laughs> but she held the course to the end, focused, dutiful, calm, the essence of equanimity. Like her remarkable mother and her heroic father, her life was guided by intention. Et maintenant, 20 ans plus tard, elle nous a soudainement quitté. Nous ne nous y attendions pas. Nous pensions qu'elle vivrait aussi longtemps que sa mère, plus de 100 ans. Elle nous a donné cette remarquable période de platine qui nous aide à voir à quel point Nous avons changé et évolué pendant plus de 70 ans. Chacun de nous a des souvenirs importants tirés de sa propre vie dans le cadre de ces 70 ans. My most significant memory as Governor General is giving royal assent to the Nishka Treaty on April 13, 2000, as Chief Joe Gosnell observed from the gallery of the Senate, a millennial landmark helping to lead us towards acknowledgement of all the past injustices to Indigenous peoples. In the new century, it was a step towards bringing to pass healing and reconciliation. And as a Canadian, I am so proud that Mary Simon, our Governor General, is an Inuk. The life and reign of Elizabeth II has been witness to our struggle, our efforts as Canadians, to become what we are meant to be, the true, the North, the free.
For almost nine years, I had the privilege of serving as the Queen's Canadian Prime Minister. 
as you might expect at that time, afforded me a rarefied window into Her Majesty's role as our Head of State in an up-close and formal sense. We had many interactions on a wide variety of matters, and I'd like to think that perhaps, perhaps, the Queen and I developed a relationship beyond that of Head of State and Head of Government. There were many issues on which we were keenly aligned, especially in relation to Canadian unity and the Commonwealth. In the years when Canada was in the forefront of the battle for the liberation of Nelson Mandela and the destruction of the evil system of apartheid in South Africa. I'm pleased to note that former Prime Minister Clark is with us today, and he was with me throughout those years in fighting for that objective that Nelson Mandela called his greatest triumph. But that triumph, as Joe can confirm, would never have taken place in the Commonwealth had it not been for Her Majesty's discreet, brilliant, and generous guidance and unerring instinct for the victory we all sought. J'ai souvent été frappé par l'intérêt dit et la bienveillance dont Sa Majesté faisait preuve envers le Canada et son peuple, et qui allait bien au-delà du simple fait qu'elle en était une chef d'État. Elle était notre reine, bien sûr, ainsi que celle d'autres pays. Mais elle éprouvait, je pensais, un amour particulier, un amour profond pour le Canada, pour sa diversité, sa géographie et son histoire. Elle manifestait sans conteste un enthousiasme soutenu pour l'avenir et pour la vigueur du plus grand pays de son royaume. Even during her very first visit in 1951, she noted, from the moment when I set foot at first on Canadian soil, the feeling of strangeness went, for I knew myself to be not only amongst friends, but amongst fellow countrymen. To President Reagan in 1983, who asked, as she prepared to leave California for British Columbia following a state visit to the United States, President Reagan asked where she was going next. And she replied, Mr. President, I'm going home to Canada. Le respect qu'a voué la reine à l'histoire du bilinguisme au Canada était maintes fois apparent. Sa maîtrise du français qu'elle parlait à la perfection. Son désir de favoriser l'épanouissement et la vigueur de la langue française. Son respect inestimable pour le rôle unique joué par les Canadiens français dans l'avancement du Québec moderne et du remarquable pays qui est le Canada maintenant, de même que son engagement profond pour l'unité canadienne qu'elle voyait comme un gage d'équité, de possibilité et d'égalité pour tous. As one who had the privilege of a significant relationship with Her Majesty for many years, I can simply say this. She was extremely intelligent, a woman of impeccable judgment, resolute, selfless, witty, very witty, and kind. Events around the world tell us regularly of violence and political coups and instability. Ordinary people in sorrow and distress as their countries descend into war, devastation, and ruin. Compare that with Canada, now 155 years old, strong, proud, prosperous, united and serene, with setbacks and challenges, of course. This is not a perfect country. We have our challenges. But we are largely unaffected by the major spasms of social and political discontent 
that have destroyed so many other countries around the world. The success of Canada, so deeply admired everywhere, as a model of civility, fairness, equality, and achievement. This didn't happen by accident. The system of government chosen by our founders had much to do with it. The British parliamentary system led incomparably by the monarchy. Today, our system might appear anachronistic to some. I understand that. But to others who constitute, in my judgment, the overwhelming majority of Canadians, the role of the monarchy, and in particular, the irreplaceable role played by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II for 70 years was absolutely indispensable in our country's hugely impressive achievements and contributions to peace and prosperity and stability at home and around the world. Her Majesty's brilliant service and contributions over seven decades did so much to sustain and elevate the golden concepts of freedom and liberty and democracy that have brought such honour to Canada and to all of our people. May God bless the Queen and may God save the King. Pour qui Pourquoi 
ceux qui s'en vont, ceux qui nous laissent, comme des écoliers dans le froid, les évadés qui disparaissent, les survivants. Ceux qui s'en vont, ceux qui nous laissent Avec le silence ou la pluie Avec la force ou la faiblesse De vouloir être encore en vie Ceux qui s'en vont, ceux qui nous Ha! 
It's not a cry you can hear at night. It's not somebody who's seen the light. Is it cold and it's broken? Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Elizabeth. Acknowledge, we pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Be steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and untiring in love all the days of your life. Et que la paix de Dieu qui dépasse toute compréhension Sois avec vous et demeure avec vous pour toujours. Amen.
par ton bras, c'est pour tes l'épée. Il sait porter la croix. Ton histoire est une épopée des plus brillants exploits. God keep our land glorious and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard.
Hello again, I'm Peter Van Dusen. You have been watching our special coverage of the commemorative ceremony for Queen Elizabeth II in Ottawa. The ceremony marking the passing of the Queen of Canada, the only monarch most Canadians have ever known until now. It was a ceremony that began with a military procession to underscore the late Queen's close ties to the Canadian forces and veterans and included a church service, as you saw, featuring poems and prayers, musical performances from choirs and well-known uh, Canadian artists, a service attended by hundreds of dignitaries, politicians, diplomats and many others with close ties to the Queen and the monarchy. Former Governor General Adrian Clarkson speaking of the Queen's uh, trip to Canada, in particular in 1982 to sign the Constitution Act giving Canada full independence from Britain and recalling some of her memories of her meetings with the Queen. And former Prime Minister Brian Mulroney remembering Queen Elizabeth as a champion of freedom who worked behind the scenes to help end apartheid in South Africa, a fight led in large measure by this country, and reminded the audience as well of the Queen's many references to trips to Canada as going home. And he also pointed to the Queen as the head of a governance system that has given Canada 150 years of stability and relative prosperity. The Queen was laid to rest in a funeral service earlier today in London and just before the Canadian ceremony uh, began marking the end of the official uh, period of mourning now, but certainly not the end of the sense of loss that many Canadians will continue to feel for a long time to come. That is our live coverage here on CPAC. I'm Peter Van Dusen. Thanks for watching.